Welcome to your astrological forecast for the week of Monday, April 29th through Sunday, May 5th, 2024. This week, we definitely have some exciting developments to talk about. I think I'm going to mention some things that I think are a huge relief and I'm excited to talk about. But before we get to those new developments for this week, I just wanted to cover a little bit of background information on what's been happening because we have recently been through so much. <laughs> I know myself and many others in my personal life, we've we've gone through so much in our own personal lives in our own way. <clears throat> um, I know there are some people out there who have been pretty stable. So if that's you, kudos to you. Cherish that. That stability is valuable. But for the rest of us as well, you know, for anyone who wherever you're at, you know, I think it's important to be grateful for the process. Obviously, it can be, you know, nail biting at times, we can have stress, we can be confused and disappointed, you know, life is crazy. But at the end of the day, you know, we just have to do our best and kind of surrender to the process and find some kind of beauty in the chaos of it all. So anyway, that's all I was going to preach about. But I did want to cover some recent transits. So I don't know if you remember at the beginning of April, <clears throat> I was mentioning uh, Venus in Aries and Mercury retrograde and I mentioned how those two phenomena those two transits would really dominate the the majority of the month of April okay so we've already seen Mercury turn direct last week really all last week Mercury was basically stationary if that makes sense uh, so this week Mercury is gaining traction it's slowly kind of waking up from that you know trippy psychedelic experience that was mercury retrograde and aries so now mercury will gradually start to move forward and basically what that means is we're still dealing with many of the same themes that we were during mercury retrograde the difference is that we are starting to move forward now rather than going through this like you know information gathering process you know turning within and you know looking to our intuition and our our spirituality and you know, going back into the past, all of those things are good. You know, they hopefully allowed us to gain a lot of information and insight on our personal situation, wherever, you know, wherever Aries is in your chart, that represents probably an area where you gained a lot of awareness during that Mercury retrograde process. So the difference now is with Mercury direct, you know, it still has to go through the same area. So in other words, we're still dealing with many of those same themes. The difference is we are applying that new knowledge. We are moving forward, gaining momentum, gaining traction, moving in a more linear way, which is more comfortable to about 87% of us that were born with Mercury Direct. We are humans. You know, we prefer, especially in Western society, we prefer things to be, you know, linear and A to B to C to D. You know, that's more kind of, uh, that's more functional, let's just say, with Mercury Direct. So things will be, a little bit more normal <clears throat> in that regard. Uh, the other thing, Venus in Aries. Uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the month how the combination of Mercury retrograde and Venus in Aries, both of these kind of, these are kind of out of place energies. So much of April, we were out of place. Things were weird, awkward, dysfunctional. Uh, that is not entirely bad. That hopefully allowed us to see things from other angles, see different perspectives, okay? That's what both Mercury retrograde as well as detriment energies like Venus and Aries, that's what those kind of help to do. They they do put you in maybe an uncomfortable position, maybe a foreign land, so to speak, uh, but in doing so, there's a huge opportunity to learn a lot. So those are, I do think those are challenging energies for most people, um, but they can be very valuable as well. So the reason why I'm bringing all that up is to say Mercury is direct, moving forward now, and this week, we will see Venus enter Taurus as well on Monday. Uh, last thing I wanted to mention about the background information, the other main event that was going on for the beginning of April was, of course, eclipse season. And by now, you know, we had that full moon last week. So, so much of the intensity that I've been talking about recently, we are moving away from, okay? Um, eclipse season is over. Mercury retrograde is over. This huge, uh, <laughs> this huge stellium in Aries is also largely over we have we've already seen the sun enter taurus and uh you know now venus is entering taurus as well so we're shifting you know one by one these these placements these planets are shifting from aries to taurus and i'm definitely <laughs> excited for that there's nothing wrong with aries energies you know um but i just think you know aries is an intense sign and we had so many placements in aries i think it relieved a lot of pressure that had been building for a long time 
you know, and that yeah, as above, so below, that applies to the world, that applies to nations and different peoples, but it also applies to us on an individual level. We had a lot of built up, pent up energy, and hopefully a lot of that has been released now through all those Aries transits, planets, you know, the eclipse, Mercury retrograde, all of it, you know, there was so much pent up energy in Aries that was finally released. Aries is all about beginnings. It's a very straightforward sign. So, so, so much has been initiated. So much has rapidly changed over the last few weeks, let's just say. Um, so we are still in that process. Things are changing very rapidly, very dramatically. But at this point, you know, I'm grateful for all those Aries energies that have thrust us into a new world, so to speak. But I'm also <laughs> maybe even more grateful at this time to move into more more and more Taurus placements where we can kind of take root and see, you know, these new paths that we've kind of blazed. You know, where do these trails go? Let's, let's, um, I don't know, like if we blazed a, a trail and like macheted our way through the jungle, you know, now it's time to like lay down some concrete and make this path, you know, a little bit more navigable, so to speak. That's what Taurus is all about. Okay. So, so yes, Aries is great. Taurus is great too. Let's move into Taurus. We're moving into uh, f deeper into the middle trimester of spring, I guess you could say in the Northern Hemisphere. So, okay. So that's my spiel. That's my rant for what we've gone through recently, basically a lot. Uh, but like I mentioned, <coughs> um, the chart I'm showing now is for Monday, April 29th, 2024, uh, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, this is where, well, it's the start of the week, but also, like I mentioned, Venus enters Taurus. So this is so exciting. And I'm actually just going to, let's just move right along. I'm going to show the chart for April 30th uh, because there are two developments, one on Monday, one on Tuesday. And I wanted to kind of talk about these together because in my mind, they're happening so close. Basically, Venus enters Taurus on Monday, April 29th. And then one day later, Tuesday, April 30th, Mars enters Aries. And to me, this is so exciting because Venus is in domicile in Taurus. She's at home there. Mars is in, in domicile in Aries. He is at home there. And honestly, I think this is exactly what we need right now. You know, like I mentioned, much of this month, we were put out of our comfort zone. You know, that was great for getting the ball rolling, for taking action, making a change, learning something new. Uh, but at the end of the day, you, you know, I think many of us are exhausted after all of that. It was good. It was useful. You know, we learned a lot. We've started new things, hopefully. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe it's just the Virgo in me, but I can only handle so much of that. You know, I think my nerves are fried. I don't know about yours. Um, so my point is... Uh, I'm excited to see these two <clears throat> placements, these two planets move into home signs. This is just much easier, much simpler energy to deal with. When more planets are in their home signs, uh, it's just like things are kind of what you would expect them to be. Things are simple. Things are easy. Granted, there may be less opportunity to like learn new things because we're more inside the box, less outside the box, if that makes sense. Things are kind of just normal. And at this point, you know, I really think we would invite a little bit more normalcy into our lives. I definitely would. A little bit more stability, a little bit more simplicity. Uh, Venus and Taurus, <clears throat> very feminine. It's showing that we are desiring earthly pleasures. We're desiring stability, you know. And with Mars and Aries, there's still that little bit of, you know, masculine energy kind of pushing us to make changes or to start something new, to be leaders in our own way. Um, you know, so, yeah, really, you can't go wrong with Venus and Taurus and Mars and Aries. They're just straightforward energies. Venus is acting like herself. Mars is acting like himself. And this will continue for the next several weeks. So, again, I'm just, I don't have much more to say about that. I'm just very excited to see that. Considering, you know, all that we've gone through, we could use, you know, some easy, some easy cards in the hand, so to speak. Uh, okay, last thing I'm going to talk about here is Wednesday, May 1st. 2024 uh so this is the day where we have a third quarter moon in aquarius and you if you've listened to me you know my spiel about quarter moons in general uh they are very volatile they're very active pretty much as much so as the full moon in my opinion i don't know why so many people follow the full moons and the new moons but they completely overlook the quarter moons because if you look out for these you'll notice them in your personal life for sure if you have kids or pets they're <laughs> 
it never fails that they are like bouncing off the walls on the night of a quarter moon, especially the first quarter moon. This is a little bit different because this is a third quarter moon. So there is a lot of physical activity, physical volatility, stress, chaos. Uh, but much of it is mental as well with the third quarter moon, especially this one. This is moon in Aquarius, very mental, very cerebral type energy. Uh, so basically a third quarter moon, it's a 90 degree aspect between the sun and the moon. In this case, the sun will be at 11 degrees Taurus and it will be squared by the moon at 11 degrees Aquarius. So you can see technically it happens in the morning Eastern Standard Time on May 1st. Uh, so yeah, so basically the sun and the moon are at odds. They're in disagreement. They are making a connection. They're communicating, so to speak, but they are, it's like they're kind of arguing. They're in different places. Sun's in Taurus, moon is in Aquarius. Both are fixed signs. Both are rigid. Neither one wants to adapt to the other. Um, you know, so they do have those things in common, but again, there's huge differences as well. So that's where we get this like tension. That's where we get this need for change. And I always say, you know, you may be stressed or anxious or restless on these type of days on quarter moon days um but you don't have to be quarter moons just it's just a time of change basically and this isn't like for for 99 of us this isn't going to be the you know life changing type of changes that we dealt with for much of much of april um you know this is a it's a quarter moon we have quarter moons every two weeks it's not the end of the world. It's just a good day for taking action, you know, even um, exercising, for example, you know, releasing some pent up energy, uh, making some kind of change or adjustment adjustment. Again, much of that could be like physical or literal. Um, but third quarter are known to be kind of like a crisis in consciousness. So it could result in, you know, maybe we need to make some kind of change to our beliefs, to our thought patterns, to our, our mentality, that type of thing. Um, yeah. And I, I will mention, though, that we just had this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. You can still see it's it's pretty much within orb. We're still dealing with it now um, because these are such slow-moving planets. Um, and this third quarter moon is kind of loosely tied into that as well. Uh, sun is loosely conjunct Jupiter and Uranus, and then moon is loosely squaring, really, the three of them. Um, so although, I mean, okay, on the one hand, yeah, it's not, quarter moons aren't typically life-changing. Um, however, this does, again, kind of trigger that Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. So it wouldn't surprise me if we saw even more earthquakes, earth changes, volcanic activity, or changes with um, economics as well. There's a lot of buzz going on with like cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, for example. You know, we have this um, disagreement, this cross between these Taurus energies which want stability, you know, Taurus can have to do with the earth, but also with money and, and resources. Um, and all that's being squared by the moon in Aquarius, which has more to do with ideas and society, improvements, changes, um, shifts in perception and ideas and things like that. So, so really anything could happen. Um, but I definitely just wanted to mention that if you feel a little wound up today, I would definitely encourage you to either make some kind of change in your life, change with your mentality, adjustment, you know, tweak your, your mental processes. Um, or if there's no changes to be made in those areas, again, you know, get outside, go running, go whatever you do. I don't know. Go um, if you play a sport or if you work out, lift weights, something where you can uh, relieve that kind of tension. Okay, so that's pretty much what I have for you. Um, last thing, I'll kind of close this by saying <clears throat> we're, we're seeing this whole, um, I don't even know what to call it, this huge lineup that we had that was in Aries and also Pisces and Taurus. This will gradually start to break up now as we get closer to summer of this year, which I'm I'm excited for. I was excited for that, that huge lineup. It was really great for stirring the pot. We've seen so much activity over the last month, that's for, for sure, right? Um, you know, I was excited for lot, all that, you know, it was exciting, but at the same time, I'm excited to see that gradually break up now. Uh, the more intense the chart is, the more intense the ramifications are going to be, you know what I mean? Uh, so gradually, you know, these, these planets, since, I mean, honestly, almost all the planets are in the same area, really. So uh, they, of course, are moving at different speeds, but gradually they're going to move into Taurus and then eventually Gemini and and I think that Gemini energy at the end of this month will be a blessing as well, just to get some kind of light, detached, you know, more humor, humorful, humorous uh, energy after all this like really intense, kind of serious energy, if I'm being honest, of Aries um, and even Taurus. So 
Um, so yeah, definitely exciting stuff. We've had a lot of exciting stuff already this year, and there's definitely a lot more to come. So thank you so much for hanging out with me for this 15 minutes or so. Um, I hope this helps you. I hope this was interesting. And yeah, let me know um, what you think of these forecasts or what I can what I can do to help you. Um, okay, have a great week, and I'll talk to you next week.